Welcome again to Motivational Monday. I'm so glad you've chosen to come and share with us. At this time, we're going to be talking about holding on to the past, or is the past holding on to you? In other words, dealing with toxic relationships and how to let go of them. Let's just um, delve right into our discussion. Are you holding on to the past? Sometimes we're holding on to things that have happened to the past, in the past, and we may not even realize it. I know for me, I uh, didn't feel like I was allowing different things to bother me. This happened, I'm done, I'm over it. But what I realized is the way that I know that I was still holding on to those things, to those toxic uh, relationships or incidences that happen is when I still allowed them to affect me in such a major way, such as I remember that uh, my mother was one that uh, she was a screamer, uh, sad to say, and one of her favorite lines was, shut up, nobody wants to hear you, just shut up, shut up, shut up uh, for me was just a horrible word. It was one of the uh, horrible statement. It was one of the worst things that you could say to me. I didn't mind you telling me to hush or be quiet or please stop talking now, but to say shut up just really just hurt me to my core. Well, that was when I was a kid. And then as I got older, I forgot all about that. I told my children that we don't tell each other to shut up. That's just rude and, and that's just what it was. But one day, I was talking, uh, I was a lot older and a counselor at the time, and I was uh, talking to a friend of mine who happened to be a counselor as well. And we were laughing and talking about something, and I said, can you believe da 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 this happened and that happened? And she said, girl, shut up. And that meant, what? I can't believe it, but I, not dealing with my past just went completely bonkers. I was like, oh, hold up. Mm -mm. You did not tell me to shut up. And I did the whole sister girl neck roll. No, you can tell me to hush. You can tell me to, but wait, wait a minute now. We're friends, but you don't go that far. You don't tell me to shut up, blah, 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 blah. And uh, her being who she is, she says, uh, sweetie, you're going to need some help for that. You need to go get some counseling for that because. Uh, that's a whole issue that has nothing with, to do with me uh, saying, girl, hush, okay? And I had to agree and I had to thank her and I had to get some help for that. But I did not realize how I was carrying that all of those years into my relationships. And it was just great that she recognized it and I did get some help uh, for it. But uh, sometimes we don't realize how we're holding on to the past of things. Uh, I remember on a very on a much more serious note is that um, I had almost uh, gotten raped. I was a survivor, of almost raped in college, and uh, I got away, praise God. But I had on this cute little red dress, and I just loved this red dress, and and I remember being so devastated and I didn't tell anybody about uh, the incident because I had gone on the date with the guy and I felt like maybe I should have recognized and I shouldn't have gone on the date with him or whatever the case may be. But I uh, took the dress and I, I shredded it all up with scissors and I threw it in the dumpster. And I just put all of that in the back of my head. Well, years later, when I started having my children, my two girls, uh, uh, the one daughter, I was like, oh, no, red just is not becoming of you. You just no, I don't think you should wear the red. Why don't you get the blue dress or whatever? And then my other daughter, I was like, red makes you look a little washed out. You know, it's just it's just not your color, you know. 
And they went along with that for a long time. Okay, I don't wear red. And then one day we were in the store and my youngest daughter, she saw this little red dress and I went into my whole field. No, red is just not, mm, I don't know. And she was like, well, I don't care if it doesn't look good on me. I want it anyway, because I like red. And I want to wear it, you know, and I was just, I bought her the dress anyway. And every time she wore it, I was just like, mm, I don't like that. Oh, mm -mm. that does not look good. I didn't tell her, but I was saying it uh, in my own mind. And so once again, uh, my friend being my friend, uh, she saw her, she said, oh, she looks so cute in that little dress. I don't ever even remember seeing her in red. I was like, because it does not look good on her. Da, 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 da. And she stopped me like, what is this really about now? Is this about her not looking good in red? Or is this about some issue with you? And I had to come to understand that it was some undealt with issue that I had, that I had put onto my children and didn't even know. And thank God they were a lot more healthy than I, healthy minded than I was at the time. And she was like, well, I don't care what I look like. I want to wear red. And then my friend was bold enough to tell me the truth that uh, her wearing that cute little red dress doesn't have anything to do with what she looks like or doesn't look like. It has to do with you. And I was allowing those things to affect how I saw life, how I saw other people, how I dealt with other people. And this is all the while I was being a therapist. I was very new at the time. Now I'm 32 years in. But at the time, I had had counseling, but not to the level that I actually needed it because I had to recognize those issues myself before I could even uh, express it to the counselor that I am carrying some uh, toxic relationships from the past and it is affecting who I am now. And if I continue, it will affect my future. And I'm giving you those examples. Those are just a few. You may have some of your own examples, hopefully by me using those, that has helped bring some things up in you because uh, sometimes, as I said, we're holding on uh, to the past and not even realizing that. Lots of times in relationships, in marriages, in partner, close partner relationships, uh, it affects our marriage and our poor partners are trying to please and, oh, I brought her flowers. She still wasn't happy with that. She said she wanted me to take out the trash. I started doing that, whatever the case may be. And poor man, you know, or whoever it is, uh, they're trying to please and they can't seem to please. And it actually has nothing to do with them. It has to do with the stuff that you're carrying. The past is holding you back, not just necessarily uh, um, the past holding on to you. It will hold on to you if you allow it to hold on to you. So it's very important that when we're adamant about stuff or things that make us very mad or very out of sorts or, or, or things that cause us uh, deep anguish and anxiety is to actually think about those things. Where did this come from? Because uh, one of my um, favorite saying is, everything comes from a place. It comes from a place, uh, brothers and sisters or whoever I'm speaking to out there. Um, didn't just start with, I don't like this, this, and this, and that, and that. Now, we do have, you know, our own flavor of things that we like. When I say flavor, I mean our own way of doing things and, you know, whatever. But when those things are something that's so seated and they bring up some kind of adverse effect in us, it's something to look at. I remember uh, years ago, I had um, a client and she was a Caucasian, beautiful young lady, but she was so adamant that uh, she was black. And I'm like, well, it's okay, you know, that if you identify with black, that's okay, but you're not black. And she was just uh, determined that she was. 
and uh, that's all that she would date was black men and white men just are, have no appeal and they're sappy and they're this. I said, well, I've seen some very nice uh, Caucasian men, white men and some nice looking men. No, they're horrible. They're this, this, this. Oh, mm -mm. I would never have anything to do with them. And when we continued on in counseling, uh, it was, you know, it was revealed that she had a lot of issues uh, that had been dealt with uh, by our white parents and other white people. And the black people who had been in her life had been so much of a positive. And at that time, she just thought, you know, this is who I relate with and that's okay. And as I say, it's nothing wrong with your having a certain flavor. But when she was so adamant and any other race was just so horrible and so wrong, then I knew that she was holding on to something that was affecting her future and her present. And um, she was able to really work through and deal with those things. It may not be as drastic as mine was or as that, uh, you know, or as that client almost 30 years ago, uh, it can be something a whole lot simpler. I, I saw this little uh, joke one time, but it was so poignant of this, um, this new couple. And this was their first Thanksgiving and they decided we don't want to have it with family. Uh, let's have our uh, first Thanksgiving together. So they decided we'll do the cooking and this, this, this. And so she gets out these two roaster pans and she cuts the turkey on the huge turkey they had. She cut it in half and seasoned it all up and put one half in uh, the roaster pan and the other half in the other. And her husband is like, what in the world? Why are you destroying that turkey like that? Why are you doing that? Why didn't you just bake the turkey whole? She says, because that's the proper way you do it. You have to put one half in one pan and another half in another pan. You don't ever, you know, like who puts a whole turkey? He's like, where in the world? What, what planet did you come from? She says, that's how it was always done in my family. That's how my mom did it. That's how my grandmother does it. That's just how it's supposed to be done. So he says, well, let's call your mom and let's find out why she does that, why she started baking it like that. And so the mom was like, yes, you put one half in one and one in the other. That's how we've always done it. So she's like, mom, why do we do that? And she was like, well, you know what? Hadn't really thought about it. That's just what we did. Uh, your grandmother, you know, was, that's why I was raised and that's how I baked the turkey. And so she was like, Hmm, maybe let's call grandma and, and ask her. And so they called her grandmother and they asked and her grandmother, she was like, you know, grandma, I put the one half in the one pan, the other half, and my husband just had a fit. And I asked my mom, she said, she didn't know that's just what you did. And grandma was just falling out laughing. She was just laughing. And she says, oh baby, are you all still doing that? She was like, the only reason I did it was because I was too poor to get a big, gigantic roaster pan, and I had two small pans, and so that's what I used. But no, I don't even do that anymore. I have now, I'm able to buy a whole pan. And so that was affecting uh, her relationship, something that she did not even know exactly where it existed from and why it was a thing that was handed down to her family. But when her husband suggested something, it was totally wrong. And it was out of a need for the grandmother. But sometimes we carry on traditions, we carry on things, we deal with things. And uh, it's not our truth. It's somebody else's truth that is put on us and we have carried it into our life and into our relationships. So holding on to the past when it's a toxic thing or and when, as I said, you will know it's toxic if it's something that deep in your heart, this is totally wrong and it's just unacceptable and I don't understand it. If it brings about some hard, deep feelings, it may just be needing to take a second look 
as to exactly where this came from. Because now with me, with someone saying shut up, I also now know it wasn't the words shut up that affected me. It was that as a kid, I felt like what I thought didn't matter and I felt disrespected. And so I was able moving forward to say, that makes me feel disrespected whenever you say the word shut up. So I needed to have, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, be able to say that what I said, someone acknowledged it, that it was important and allowed me to talk. And so it wasn't the words just, <clears throat> just shut up in itself. And it made me go back and look at some of those things in my life that were so hard, fast, and true and see that they came out of toxic things. And I'm hoping that uh, our little talk with this may help you to uh, say, I have some things in my life and uh, they may not be as abstract. They may be things that you know are toxic in your life, okay? And you keep on repeating those things and keep going back uh, to those toxic things. Uh, let me say real quick, I don't want to uh, delve so deeply in it, but um, just on the surface right now is because of the neurons, the pathways in our brain, which are actually what they are, are habits that have been formed either from hereditary, you know, uh, from environmental, uh, all of the things that you brought with you when you were born and then developed because of the environment that you were born in, those things are there. And sometimes uh, they cannot be positive. And so you're trying to get rid of toxic things in your life and you can't understand why, you're going to have to deal with the root of the problem. I see this is not just, you know, I have a, you know, smile like my granddad or I have feet like my mom or whatever the case may be, but I've inherited some things from them that were may not all be positive. And so some of it is just not the toxic relationships that you have developed, but some that you brought in the world with you. And you have got to visit those as well and say, I want to make changes. And it may cause you to have to have hard conversations with people. It may cause you to say, I just cannot have this person in my life. Uh, because they have toxic situations that they have not dealt with. And it's not going to be positive for me. Uh, not that the person is necessarily bad, but they have some bad stuff. They have some issues that they have not dealt with. And I know a lot of times, especially as women, we feel like that we can help overcome, that love conquers all and all of that, you know? And in some cases that's true. But in some, when it is so deep seated and it's something that the person can't see, you trying to love on them and support them and be that and all of that, and it does not always manifest in a positive way. It will bring you down. It will make you a toxic person. It can make you not live out the positive truth that's in your life because you're trying to be this person for them. So let's remember those things is that sometimes uh, the best way to help a person is to say, you need to go get help from that. And after you have done that work and uh, dealt with those issues and where you are in that, then maybe we can revisit the relationship. And sometimes uh, if that person never gets that right, the way you can love them the best is by uh, leaving that toxic relationship so that you can be the best person that you can be. I hope that with our Motivational Mondays uh, that you found some insight. I'm not trying to bog us down with stuff. All I want to do is just motivate us to be the best people that we can get, that we can be. And as I have said before, uh, my email address, if you would like to uh, ask me questions or you would like for me to speak more on a certain thing, or if you even have some ideas or some topics that you would like for me to delve into, uh, please 
feel free to email me at unitedfor54 at gmail.com. That's United for Life 54 at gmail. And as always, thank you so much for coming and visiting and have a great motivated Monday and rest of the week.